Hello, welcome, my name is Roman. And in this video, I am going to give you an introduction to a project that I am starting. It's a music project. It's not like my other projects. And let's get to it. Okay, so hello, welcome. Usually in most of my videos, I do a combination of some reviews and also do uh, write some music and uh, some tutorials. And today I'm doing something a little bit different. I have a project that's gonna take me several months to complete, probably a good month to complete, uh, hopefully less than two months. Uh, and it's in this case. Um, Basically, yeah, let's just go ahead and open it up. I had like a spiel I'm gonna give you, but let's just open it up and see what it looks like. Ugh. Obviously it's a violin. It's a very old case. And the violin is a heirloom for me. It was my grandfather's. He passed away several years ago. And I was, I guess in essence, bequeathed it. I don't know if he directly bequeathed it to me, but it was given to me. Uh, as being the probably the only person one of the few people in the family that plays music and does music actively and uh it's kind of a it's, it's got a kind of a special story uh this project is not like other projects that i've taken on i've done similar i guess but definitely nothing like this and basically my grandfather bought this when he was uh, a young man he played it uh, fiddle style a lot uh, it's interesting because I never grew up knowing my grandfather playing music. I never, that I can recall, ever saw him uh, play music. So uh, that part's kind of interesting. But he grew up in rural Missouri, and he was a farmer. He did uh, all of his mechanical, most of his mechanical work, and he did a lot of woodworking. And as he got older, he did a lot of woodworking. He did... A lot of cabinetry, gun cabinets, cabinets, tables, chests, boxes, knickknacks, whatever. He, he did a lot of it. And as he got older, he stopped doing the finishes on the pieces that he makes. So he would make a commission piece and then he would be up to the owner to finish it because he did not like finishing it. And he's really, really talented, really good. I mean, I still have... My mom still has pieces. My grandmother still has pieces. You know, he built his house. He built his shop. He, he, he was pretty very well versed and versatile in woodworking, carpentry, that kind of stuff. And he made a, a point to me one time. I think I'd talked about maybe making a guitar in my early teens. And he kind of jested that basically, uh, yeah, there was no way that I would ever be able to, I, not that I would never be able to, but that I wouldn't be able to make a guitar because there was so much um, fine detail and uh, craftsmanship and knowledge that goes into building, right, into the luthier skill set. And he made it even sound like he wasn't capable of it, which I thought was really weird because he's an extremely capable person. And I think what it amounted to is he basically... He, he liked doing the big stuff. I don't think he really enjoyed doing fine, fine, fine work. He did great detail work, but I just, it just wasn't his cup of tea. So, um, having grown up around him, and he taught me how to use all the tools in his, in his shop, everything from the planer to edgers, sanders, lathes, drill presses, table saw, saw scroll saws, bands, bands, saws, belt sand, everything, basically. And uh, he taught me how to use them so that I could do them on my own. I don't have access to those tools, which is kind of interesting. So uh, my every now and then I dip into uh, restoring furniture and some other stuff. But I'm actually going to refinish this violin. Um, it seems kind of bold in a way for me. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, it's wood and glue. 
and you just gotta go slow slow short takes shortcuts everything just super slow and everything's got to be small so i'm really curious to see how this turns out right now it's not playable to any meaningful playability uh, i've already sampled this and um I did long strokes, short strokes, and what I call chirps. I don't know what else. These strings won't stay tuned at all because the tuning pegs is just worn out. But uh, so, yeah, this is going to be kind of like my journey, uh, just reflecting back on my grandfather, who's no longer with us, to uh, just have a sense of feel and restore it back. What happened was about, uh, so when this was given to me, the story goes, and other people can talk about, it, somehow the, the top cracked. And uh, we'll go ahead and give you a little, a little, I'll let you look at it. So there's our curling. I got to make sure this thing's tracking. There we go. Very pretty wood, I think. Flamed maple sides. And you're going to start noticing some D issues that come up. So right here, I've got a crack. I think the block has come dislodged or has expanded or moved or something. But this looks like it's being pushed out. And which has led to some cracks here. There's a crack above the F hole. There. And on this is where the, this is where the story really kicks in. There is a crack that goes all the way from here. Follow it all the way up. And uh, what else is going on here? This needs to be the pegs and the obvious, you know, tuners need to be reamed. So as the story goes, my grandfather had a friend who, and again, my grandfather was in his older years at this point. Um, he wanted it fixed. He gave it to a, a guy. And from what I can tell, it looks like the guy just put glue on top of the crack. I don't believe that it's been taken apart and uh, put another layer, some sort of coat, some sort of varnish or something on it. And he only, in the, you might be able to see the back a little bit. It's got just like some weird hazing. And you can see, like, it looks like somebody tried to sand it. But the sandpaper was way too rough. It doesn't look like they got into the wood itself, but it looks like the, the just the varnish is just all scratched up. Oh, and the last thing I forgot, it's actually coming apart here. So this, I can, you can hear the glues exposed. I can almost get my fingernail underneath of it. The, you know, this should have about what two millimeters or something like that, maybe a mil, millimeter and a half, and it's, it feels like it's about one. Uh, what else was there? There's something else. Oh, anyways. So now the interesting part. Part of the reason why I decided to go ahead and do this is I did not think this violin was probably anything fancy. My grandfather would have bought it off of uh, Sears, Mon Sears Roebuck or a Montgomery Ward catalog. Um, I actually have some accordions with the original uh, catalog sheets in there for buying the um, accordion. And that's just the way they did it, right? And this particular violin is a Willa Kanowski. Uh, not Willa, it's Will Kanowski. And it was made in 1944, and the serial number is 1436. Will Kanowski built approximately 5,000 violins. There's not a lot of them that are out there for sale. And the ones that I have seen for sale go from low 400s to about 2,000. Um, I didn't study a whole lot about him as a particular maker or what he did, et cetera, et cetera. But he, uh, he always would make his violins with, he'd cut out this little, I don't know, whatever you call this, little, his little trademark, that was it. So you make that. And then, um, so I'm pretty certain it is an original, uh, yeah. And so I'm going to start taking this apart and filming it. And uh, just doing something a little different that's not, uh, that is musical, but not always on my computer. And yeah, I'll get new, I, I'm debating whether or not to get a new end 
piece here. I feel like to keep it authentic, I could keep it and it'd probably be fine. We'll see. It definitely needs a new tail piece and pin. So yeah, so this is where I'm at and uh, looking forward to getting into this. I've been prepping for weeks of study and getting tools, lists collected. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to doing this. It's going to be fun. Um, yeah, but just one more look. I also have a couple other, uh, some other stuff I will track. There we go. So one last time. Definitely see the crack there. Definitely also needs a new nut, new end pin in the back. Back some, you can see the gradations or the foggy covering. So I have a little bit of work to do. I'm looking forward to doing it. I'm looking forward to collecting the video and putting it together for you all and showing you the steps and processes. And that's it. And if I love it, I'm going to buy a, a kit and put it together so I can uh, just hone my skill in terms of attaching the, the neck, um, you know, putting all the accessories on there, doing the, the nut and doing the ebony, uh, the fingerboard and the, uh, I forget what this piece is called. Still has the sound post. Yeah. So yeah, it's going to be fun. So thanks guys for hanging out. Um, and you all have a great day and I look forward to talking to you soon. Please leave comments below, like, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. But I'm definitely curious of your thoughts about doing this and uh, you all take care and enjoy. Roman and today we're gonna give you a uh... hello welcome back my name is Ro I don't want to say welcome back hello welcome my name is Roman and uh, in this episode Roman and today we're gonna give you a uh... hello welcome back my name is Ro no, I say welcome back hello welcome my name is Roman and uh, in this episode <clears throat>